Today we're going to install the third band of Strix and we're going to deal with the stern of the boat which is the probably the, the most challenging part in terms of bending. So I'm going to take you through some of the 3D drawings which show you the stern and then we look at my progress as we go along. If by now you haven't acquired this uh, 3D set of drawings of this one, I highly recommend it. Um, again, it's just a no-brainer. It shows you all the detail that the book is trying to explain to you using words, and it shows you photographically. And it's just, it's just the best tool in this practicum. The first thing I did is pulled out this old jig that I used on the Naparima to laminate the stern and use this to do a pre-bend of the piece that's going to fit in the stern. Trying to bend these pieces in is a real challenge and I've made up this jig that instead of pulling it's actually pushing the piece right in the stern and then I heat it in place and get the bend I'm looking for. And I just want to show you the clamp that we've made up. Um, it's really made up of a few parts, some long screws, the longer that you can get, the more flexible they are. Um, the, I call this a clamp screw. And as you turn it down, it goes down towards the model if you've locked it in place. Um, this is simply a bracket that we put in the in the boat um, and it's just a piece of aluminum and that's really how it works it's really very very simple i put it in the boat it's quite simple take off one or both of the screws and in my case i put it through the gun port windows you push the floating screw down. This floating screw is not threaded, it needs a nut. So there you have it. You can change, I have different threaded screws along the piece of hardwood. And then you simply turn this and that will clamp the piece in place. So there we go. Sometimes it's necessary because it's on an angle and it'll tend to float up. You might actually want to clamp it down, which will hold it from rising up as you, as you tighten up on it. And again, you pre-bend the piece. Um, so you really don't have to put a lot of pressure on the piece um, when you're tightening it. And you're just trying to prevent it from kicking out, which will, which will happen when you clamp these pieces down. I sanded the end of the screw to make sure there are no sharp edges, but still found I was getting a little indentation. So I made up this little end piece. It has to spin on it, um, so it can't be threaded. Um, so it just gives it a, a softer a, a softer bit. And this is a little piece of scrap hardwood I had. Well, that came out pretty good. Um, remember, there's a molding strip that's going to come across here, um, but it's flush against the frames. And um, yeah, now we do the other side. Having bent the piece into a shape and achieved a good fit, the key is really going back and micro-managing to make sure that when we pull it in, we really get a nice tight line. This is as good as it is on the rest of the model. Um, but you really need to spend time to make sure that having done all this work, 
you don't screw it up in a piece like this. Some of you may have a different way of holding or bending the piece in place. Um, I would really be very interested um, if you have a different method or better method that um, you, sh you take the time to share this with us. Greg was giving me some pressure about um, not taking measurements straight off the model because of the curvature of the frames. And of course, he's quite right. So you need to put a tick strip on it and then you can take the measurement flat. 0.924, which is 0.231. So 0.231, that's the thickness of the board there. So that's just short of 12 inches. I'm kind of a, a little disappointed now looking at these measurements. Initially, if you remember, I was following the plank layout for these planks at the stern. And these are all relatively the same size and the big spaces came at the bottom. In reality on the model, that's not what I'm finding. I'm having to increase the size of the streaks as they hit the stern from 10 through 13. Um, so they're not all neatly exactly as um, as shown here, um, because if you look at the, the plan, the big spaces were really coming down this side. And if you look at the 3D models, they're all like exactly the same, but in practice, that's not what has happened. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to take all that out now. So I'm going to have to increase the size as we go forward. Um, what I've done is I've measured the remaining exact length divided by the um, seven plants that I have left and that's going to be the width as it hits the stern. We are at the interesting phase now where we have come into the corner and according to the diagram I am one streak too much in. Having said that I am where I am and um, my line is still good um, so we are just going to bend that now and see how it works out.
As we're getting closer to the end, of course, I have to follow the advice of Greg. And so what I've done is I put some tape here and taken a series of marks and put my tick strips along and then divided by the number of streaks. And so I've come to a fairly good understanding of, of these, the various sizes. I have one little issue. Um, seems just at the front on the starboard side. Um, there's a little more space than on this side. Other than that, the two, the two sides are fairly close to each other. Very slight difference, but that's to be expected. As I'm certainly not as uh, perfect or skilled as the people who've written this practicum. Um, so again, what is important is that we don't end up with odd looking pieces. And so if I spread the little bump that I have on this side over the six remaining streaks or planks, um, the problem will go, go away. So that's what we're going to do to finish up the last two streaks in this band and then do the final effect. Another major reason for sanding down is when we stick these pieces, we need to know that there are no issues at all. And if there's an issue, the ideal time to take it out is shortly after it's stuck. Um, you don't want to wait eight or 10 hours when the glue is really set in um, to come and pull a piece out. As we're coming down, in a sense, this is the last five streaks. Um, we now have to be absolutely meticulous about making sure that we follow the measurements on the individual pieces. So what I've done is I've written the measurements at different parts of the piece, because obviously they vary. And it's just really very simple to take the measurement as we go along. I've also found this sander uh, very useful at this point in time. Um, I don't want to use the machines um, because they'll probably take too much off. So this has a curved side and a flat side. And it's just very easy to go. I use the concurve side to do the inside and the convex side to do the outside. While um, putting the last two bow pieces on, I actually had to take them back off because uh, I didn't get a tight, tight fit right up in the bow. So I actually used CA to lock the front piece in. And I thought I had gotten all the challenges behind me. And up comes piece number five. And uh, um, you kn I knew that we'd have to um, cut a curved piece here. But of course, it's very difficult to get a piece of the cardboard um, inside here. So eventually I cut a small piece um, and put it alongside. And it's got a very slight curve 
coming in. Um, so I'm on the fourth piece. I haven't got it right yet. Um, this is the piece from the other side. And you remember I said lots of stock? Well, I thought I had so much stock and I've run out because I'm using um, cut pieces both at the bow and the stern. And so I'll still have uh, eight, 16 pieces to get and I will need the wider stock um, to get those, those done. Normally at this time I'd be going on the time elapse, whizzing through this, but such a critical point um, this is such a visible part of the model that you really need to make sure that you get this, that part of the streak absolutely flat and correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some thick CA in the corner. Um, let it set for about 10-15 seconds and then push down on the PVA and stick the rest of the streak. Well, that last piece brings this uh, video to the end. So just one band of streaks left to go. And um, I am hoping that it's going to be the easiest band. It should be the easiest band um, on, these, on these hull streaks. So we'll see you in the final video on Planking 101. And I hope you found it useful. Remember, keep modeling. Mm -hmm.